think we're uh, set on now, so let's go ahead and just get started. Um, so, we've, uh, I'm Andy Dillon, I'm on the engineering resources team, I work with uh, Michael back there, and uh, we're kind of doing this thing now at these uh, Connect events, or in the past the UDS, where we kind of gather people in that uh, this will be, like, for their first event, kind of uh, give a little uh, presentation on working in Lenaro and some tips and how process works and stuff like that to, uh, don't have a mic. so stay close to the mic. Oh, okay, okay. sorry. So, um, this, is a, this is kind of the presentation. We started this in Budapest. We're doing it now. We're going to try to keep uh, doing this type of thing uh, each, at each uh, Connect event because we tend to have a, you know, new people coming in a lot. So, First thing I was going to talk about is what the engineering resources team is. Um, in a nutshell, oh yeah, go full screen, please. Okay, I, it's going to be a little hard because I'm going to switch in between windows some, so it may kind of mess up the slideshow. But uh, I can try. Okay, so. And this is what we're here to do, is to help you. So basically, in a nutshell, you know, there's a, as you join, there's certain things that you may have a hard time with figuring out and stuff, and our team is here to uh, address those needs. Um, what we find out happening is there's a, a lot of common issues people are hitting. So we really have spent a lot of time trying to maintain a healthy wiki. And the, a lot of effort goes into that because it's in constant flux and trying to keep that up to date and you know make sure links are accurate and not broken. Um, consume a lot more time than you would imagine, but um, there's three main places to, to find information that, that our team is uh, doing. The, the uh, first link is uh, just that resources link. It is a pretty simple uh, intro. The how-to is one of the ones I would really recommend you take a look at. We uh, we have a list of uh, a bunch of common how-tos, and we also have a, a tagging scheme that we use to where when you create a web page, if you put at the bottom of it this category how-to, they'll all kind of show up to where it's really easy to go look on the wiki and see all the how-tos that are written. And um, we invite you, if you find that there's a need for a new how-to, if you want to write it yourself or, you know, come ping me and say, hey, the, I think that we need to you know, add some documentation on, you know, feature X or something, let us know and uh, we can help out. And then we also have an FAQ section, which is just some uh, little uh, supplemental information to the uh, how-to pages. So um, the first thing I was going to uh, talk about is getting the most out of these sessions. Uh, Kiko talked about it a little bit this morning, and Steven and George, they all kind of had little bits, but the uh, one page I would recommend you guys taking a look at, actually I kind of do it before every event now, is this UDS Tips, and I actually just stole this content from Kiko from uh, one of his UDS presentations. Uh, let me bring up that page. Oops, sorry, I guess he's out of work. So here's the UDS Tips page right here and it goes into some details some things I, I, I want to highlight are um, when you go into these the sessions that you'll uh, participate in I don't know if you guys have been in one yet but this is that you know, you're sitting in a room they kind of, they call it the fishbowl where you'll have a few critical people in the middle they're doing some <laughs> talking and you're planning out like how to, to solve some problem um, and that's the important thing when you start these things if you're leading one or if you see this not happening, we need to be clear on the problem you're going to solve in that one hour. Like Kiko was saying, it's a short period of time, so you need to stay focused. And uh, I think one little tip for that is if you kind of foresee a, a tangent that the conversation is likely to go, and you already have another session for that, be clear up front. Hey, we're talking about this, and if you're worried about you know this tangential uh, conversation, that's going to be covered you know at three o'clock today. Um, as Kiko said earlier, you've got to drive to actions, and you need to record these actions. Um, what's going to wind up happening is we cover 
ton of stuff over the week. This, the disconnect event isn't uh, quite as intense as like a UDS, but you go through all these sessions and by the end of it you forget what you've agreed to do. So in each one of these sessions, we have a thing called Etherpad. And everyone should, when you go to the session, get on your laptop, and Etherpad is a shared collaborating uh, uh, web-based editor to where everybody can type notes and stuff. And it's really cool. And as you're sitting in the session, this is where you need to record these actions and just put them you know, in brackets, action. Bob needs to do this. Um, I, I think an important thing, and sometimes people don't do this, but it helps in those sessions. Up front, try to nominate like one person to be responsible for the notes because sometimes if you just say, ah, we'll just all kind of do it, things slip through and they don't get taken as accurately. So just have one person and try not to make that be the same person all week because it gets old. It's, uh, it's really hard taking notes and taking good notes. Um, and then one tip I'm going to uh, mention is avoiding what they call the UDS hangover. I guess it'll be connect hangover now. By the end of the week, like I was saying, you're going to forget a lot of the things that you've talked about and stuff. And you can go back and look at Etherpad and stuff like that to remember. But I would like to uh, also recommend taking personal notes along with like the collaborative notes because there's certain things you may think of, and it doesn't really belong in the Etherpad log, but it's something you're going to need to remember, like, the next week. And it's happened every time for me by the, you know, I fly out Saturday after the event, and by Monday I, I just forget. Sometimes even with the notes, I forget the context to the notes. So um, just uh, try to be mindful of, of that. Um, now I was going to go into the talk about how our release workflow uh, here we go release workflow so I'm, the, the intent of this slide is to kind of give you a visualization of how the uh, work we do flows at Lenaro um, that link at the bottom, the requirements process how to, actually documents this pretty well and we try to keep that up to date. So um, this is kind of a summary of that and it gives a, a better visualization. But as you can see here, what we start with are usually these things we call technical topics. And it, that's kind of a broad topic, you know, obviously, sorry. And uh, we break those down into individual technical requirements. So one technical topic is going to have one or more technical requirements. And these little icons here, the, what the purpose of these is, is these are things and then the green are in the actual Lenaro wiki. The things in blue are in Launchpad. The, the key thing to note is, so everything in the wiki you can cross link to where they reference each other. Once you go to Launchpad, you have to do a two-way linking. So you'll have a technical requirement blueprint that's opened in Launchpad, and that's going to point up to the original technical requirement that's in the wiki. And then as you create the actual engineering blueprints that contain the work you're doing, those are going to point into this TR blueprint to where you can go from top to bottom or bottom to top to see how uh, requirements are flowing. So to give you an example of this, Show. So here is the 1111 uh, technical topics for the graphics team. And if we scroll down a little bit here, you'll see this G1, this is a technical topic, embedded memory management. And each one of these individual links below this are actually technical requirements. So this is where it's documented in the wiki. If then click on this, it's going to take you in a launch pad. And from here, you can see all the individual engineering uh, blueprints that are defined to actually complete that requirement. And a new thing that we're doing now is the monthly cycles. So this is kind of different from what um, we've done in the past, but uh, Joey and uh, Alexander actually put together an extensive document on that. I'll bring that up now. 
it's in a, a Google Doc. This thing is like 46 pages discussing how the monthly cycles work. Uh, one big thing I want to talk about is just how the schedule works. Um, the the kind of general pattern you can see here is in like month one you're trying to finalize on what you're going to do the next month and you're starting to plan out what you're going to do two months from now. And that kind of keeps flowing until you get toward the end of a release where you start doing some other uh, duties on that. Um, the reason we're doing this is to um, kind of help, uh, it, it makes this easier for our member companies to understand what we're doing at any given time. We were used to, used to we were working in these six month increments and it was hard to see what was going on. So now a member company can look and see that we're actually making progress month to month. Um, it also helps us keep things in sync to where we produce a good Lenaro evaluation build once a month where all the components are uh, put together. Um, one big note I want to make on this is so working in these one month cycles in the past sometimes we have blueprints that were like big chunks of work and like the one blueprint isn't going to be able to be completed in a month. So as you're defining the work you're doing you need to think about how you can define these in chunks of work that can be done in shorter increments of time. So if, if the most one month, but you know, try to, we're trying to move to this more agile approach. So just th these need to be broken up because each blueprint now, in addition to be targeting for a release, you target it for a specific milestone. And we have a bunch of software that's tracking if we're like on uh, course to uh, make these commitments each month. And then integration. Remember to plan some time on this. I think uh, actually Zach had some problems maybe a month or two ago with like people were dragging just a little bit to get their stuff to Android, and he wasn't going to have time to, to integrate that well. So just you know plan for that. Um, IRC. So I hope by now you're all on IRC, but I want to talk about. First, the importance of it. Um, this is how we we do a lot of communication over IRC. That and the mailing list. Um, one thing that's great about IRC is it helps create a, a good community. So if we're all online and active and new people are coming in and asking questions, as long as we're all on, we can help them out and we can have these uh, good discussions. Um, since well, Inaro is basically going 24-7 now. There's people in all time zones working all the time. If you just run XChat normally or whatever your IRC client is, you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff going on when your computer's offline. So a piece of software I highly recommend is called BIP. And it's, um, they call it IRC proxy, but you can put this on a server that's running 24-7. And it's always keeping a log of all the conversations going on. And you can point your IRC client to the BIP server. And each time you log back in through that client, it'll give you a replay of everything that's happened. And you don't have, you know, it's one of those things that after a while you kind of start to scroll through and, you know, you kind of ignore a lot of stuff that you know is not applicable to you. But you do, from time to time, catch up on really important conversations. So, um, if you have a how-to on BIP, I highly recommend reading it and setting it up. Um, and also, by the end of this week, I believe Anmar has set up a Lenaro IRC BIP server. So I'm trying to talk with him and figure out how, like right now you kind of have to do it on your own, but I think within a week or two we should be able to point people to just a server so you don't have to do your own infrastructure for that. Um, a couple of XChat tips I was going to uh, show you guys. Let's see. First thing, when, when you're connecting to a, a BIP server, you actually just point it to the BIP server and you don't have to tell it what channels because those are configured on the BIP server itself. So just, uh, I found that really confusing. The BIP documentation is a little lacking. We actually cover that in the wiki about setting that up. But uh, a couple of uh, XChat settings that aren't uh, default that are kind of handy. First one I'll, I'll mention to you guys is 
there's a thing called per channel notifications. It's like on this Lenaro Mentors channel, which is, uh, I, I think that's in the new staff task when you start it, will tell you to join this. This is a, a place where you can ask like Michael or I or anyone else on it, like kind of beginner questions and stuff. Um, I put an alert on this channel to where anytime a message goes to it, it blinks an I, uh, blinks a, a little tray icon in the bottom. And you don't want to do that on like uh, Hash Lenaro because it's so active, but if there's like a team specific channel you're on or something, I find that real handy so you don't miss out on a question that's coming your way. Uh, another handy setting that I have uh, found is in the in input box here, they have the uh, nick completion suffix. First of all, most people use colon. It's default to a comma, but if you want to like look like everyone else, colon is a nice uh, thing to use there. But the completion suffix, what's nice about that is if you want to um, speak with someone, say I want to send a note to Joey, I can type J-O-E, hit tab, and it completes. It's like bash syntax completion. So it's nice where you don't mistype someone's name when you want to talk to them. Can I say something to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, but no, there's more than one day that works for the company. So. Yes, and when that happens, it, it'll, it's kind of, it won't like list them, so you have to hit tab multiple times and it'll cycle through. It's kind of like uh, the, uh, it's like the Vim style uh, completion when you're opening a file from, uh, like within Vim. And you won't also, like if you want to send just to one person directly, you just double click on that person, brings up a private one. I didn't know about double click. I always right click and then say open dialog window. Okay, like yeah, and then that's a private chat. Just double click, right? Like, yeah, let me try. Let me see. Right. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, double click doesn't work for me. Oh, okay. But if you right click and say open dialog window, it's just going with that one person. Yeah. Now, when I say private, it that's still going through like the Freenode server. So if there was like actually you know some private information. And, you right. didn't want to go out on the web, use the uh, use the new core, which is going through you know our own IRC channel, and then it's right. you know private within on our own. Yeah. See, um, as far as uh, how we talked, what I, I want to mention, we still, oh, yeah, go ahead. On the, on the beach chart, you had uh, an Iceland for base 10 that you know that the work exists. Now we have a server for base 10. Yes, as long as, uh, yeah, you have to, it requires you to log in, so you, got, you have to have a Launchpad account. You know, it's just like all the other services. But yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, actually, I should have, uh, I should mention that. So. If you're on IRC and uh, say you got a, a build break in the kernel and you want to ask for help on that, it's really kind of annoying if you paste like multiple lines into a channel and kind of gets everybody off on what they're reading. So what you can do is copy the actual content of that and you get a paste spin. Here, I'll just uh, give you a quick example. I don't know if you guys have... Uh, into pastebin, but you can just uh, enter a bunch of text here and say paste, and what it's going to do is give you a URL here. So instead of pasting all that content to the channel and kind of distracting people, you can just say, hey, I got a, a kernel build break, and then paste the link to this and, you know, can someone help me with this? And that way it's less distractive to people that aren't really wanting to follow that uh, one specific thread. And once you're in the, in the link, other people can add to it and you can interactively Correct. Yeah, I'm mentioning that because it's very useful. We've been using uh, Etherpad and Facebook a lot. That's why we work with it. Yeah, and uh, actually, if you want to get very interactive, I'd go just go straight to take whatever you had in Facebook and go to Etherpad because it's. Uh, there is one thing ugly when you, when you use Linaro Facebook. It is hard to get there if you are not uh, Linaro. 
Yeah, yeah, actually that's a really good point. You need to be uh, cognizant about who you're uh, doing it with because if it's someone outside of Lenaro, you just go to pastebin.com. Exactly. That's the same if thing. You to, if you want to paste bin something on hash Lenaro, do it in public. Yeah. That's a good point. I just got hit by it once. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, pull this back up. Yeah. So, um, talking, the, the main thing I want to mention here is that it's hard talking to people on multiple continents at the same time. So we have like conference numbers, we have a bunch of different ways because uh, a lot of times different things fail. So, in general we have the conference calls and we actually have those numbers listed here on the uh, engineering resources page. So there are two different sets of uh, numbers. Most things are moving now to this uh, zip, zip conference call. But if you, if you need to dial into a meeting and you forgot the uh, like what the number is, just go to wikilenaroorg slash resources and that's how I always remember them. You follow that link to, uh, to get to the numbers. Um, another thing we use is Mumble. So I don't know how familiar you guys are with Mumble, but it's uh, it's kind of it's basically IRC but for voice chatting. Um, it's a little tricky to configure. So the the important thing I want to mention is I've seen this happen a couple of times. It actually happened to me once where someone wanted to mumble with me and I'd been too lazy to set it up. So then I'm like, oh, hold on a second, I need to set it up now. Well. It, you, you lose some valuable time, so things like Mumble, just set it up when you have some free time. That way when someone like Kiko pings in and is like, hey, I want to Mumble, you don't have to be kind of embarrassed and fumbling around, oh, I can't configure my microphone or whatever. Um, and one of the key things to getting on our Mumble server is that you need to be a member in the Lenaro group. This is uh, Tildy Lenaro. And I'm about to, I think I'm answering your next question, Joey. We don't want to put people directly in that group because it makes it kind of hard to manage. So you wind up becoming a member indirectly. So as you can see here, we have like the Lenaro Android team. So people are a member of Lenaro by being, by virtue of being in this team. So when you the reason I'm showing you this link is it's an easy way to check and see if you're actually, uh, if you have access to Mumble, this is the first thing we would do to debug it, but if, if you're not on it now, go ask your team lead to add you to it, that way the problem's sorted out now, and if you have problems, talk to me, or I hesitate to say it, but Joey is probably the, the guy that, if it's beyond something simple, it's going to be him that uh, is going to know how to figure that out. It's just, just for Mumble. Do we need to belong to the Lenaro group just for the purpose of uh, Mumble? Yeah, that, well, that's specific. I mean, that, is there other stuff that being in that helps with also? Being in, sorry, there was a question. Um, being in that Lenaro group, is it, it's not so just for Mumble. But so that's um, read write access to the wiki. Yeah. So, and, there's, and just for your knowledge, about a week and a half ago, we made a change a little bit to the access of uh, Mumble. So there's actually a, a Lenaro Mumble access group now of which uh, the Lenaro team is part of. And we made that change so that we could add community members yeah. who are not part of Lenaro but still participate <coughs> on some of the projects so that they can use our Mumble as well. Yeah. So you mean community people don't have access to the wiki? Uh, read, read, write read, access? Yeah, read access to the wiki. Oh. To, to internal sections of the wiki. Oh, internal, yes, internal, slightly, not public internal ones. Internal is a slightly different one. That'll be the Lenaro, it'll be the Lenaro private access uh, entry that they have to as well. Yeah. That's the new core one, right? That's the new core one? Yeah, so that's the, the private new core, yeah, that's the internal wiki access. Correct. So, now, I, I, now, I could be wrong. We should test this for somebody who's not, uh, who's not a member of the, of the Lenaro community, sorry, Lenaro proper. You can, I think you can write because, uh, yeah, well, to stuff that's not internal because uh, I know like there's some Overo stuff that was uh, 
So, well, uh, if someone from Gum Sticks had gone through, I, I would left out the better. com on Overo, and they like it to be referred to as Overo com. So, someone had actually gone through and updated all that for me. Um, and then I, the last thing I was going to mention, when all else fails, Skype, Google Talk, have them on hand. Oop, one more. Pick up the phone. Oh, touch. Pick up the type. phone and call direct. Well, yeah. I, I, I say start with phone. This, this is like the order of a phone, mumble, Skype. There may, you know, sometimes different people have. Like I noticed Paul Larson has trouble with mumble, so that's not going to work with him. So that's why I, you always need a, a few different backup plans for uh, audio chatting. So dealing with the uh, IT problems at Lenaro. <laughs> we have a pretty simple system they call this the request tracker. So you'll hear people say open an RT ticket. It winds up just being an email to rt at lenaro.org. We have two links there. The uh, top link is really just a quick and dirty, this is what to do. The second link kind of uh, goes into more detail about <coughs> how the process works and like how you can uh, prioritize things. So. If you're just in a hurry, the first link is what you want, but if you're wanting to understand a little bit more about the process, the second link uh, gets you there. Um, you can also view the status of a request at rt.lenaro.org. It's the single sign-on, so you can get in there, and after you've opened a ticket, you'll get an email back, and it'll give you like ID, so you can uh, query for it within the system. This is... Uh, one of the most common things that people were uh, needing this for, and this should be fixed now, but used to when people were starting, they didn't get access to uh, people.lenaro.org or get.lenaro.org. So this was like a common thing. Everyone was like, ah, I need access to this. How do I do it? So it, it was an IT request that gets that done. And we have just a, a form uh, a form letter to, to send to IT to get that access for you. So, Git within Lenaro. Um, I'm not, th this slide's uh, going to be a little bit different than how we did it at the last UDS because Arndt is actually giving a Git tutorial tomorrow uh, on advanced Git topics. So, if you're using Git, I think it's going to be a really interesting thing to, uh, to attend. So, the, the most important thing I'd recommend, see that, I think it's at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Um, the other thing, Kiko mentioned this earlier, but it's, a, it's an important to configure your Git to send uh, emails to patches at lenaro.org. This is how we're tracking status, and as I said, you need to make sure that that's sent from your Lenaro email account so that um, happens. Uh, we actually have a how-to that can, uh, it's just a quick little cut and paste that you can put to your .git config to uh, configure your email client to do that. So that's probably the easiest way, that way you don't forget things. Um, a couple of trees of interest within Lenara that I wanted to talk about. The, the first one is the, you know, kind of say how they fit together. The first one is the Linux dash Lenaro, and then it's based on the kernel. So we've got a 2638, a 2639, now we have a 30. These are the trees that uh, Nico is maintaining. So he's taking the the tag version from from Linus's tree, and then he's pulling in things that should be going upstream. If they aren't upstream, they'll be soon. Sometimes he's pulling them from you know like arm fixes or something like that. The second tree is Linux dash Lenaro, and currently it's uh, dash natty .git. This is a tree that John Rigby is maintaining. And this is the actual kernel that's going into our Lenaro build. So the, all the different LEBs and such are based on, well, sorry, not the LEBs, but like the common Lenaro kernels that are getting built, like say the Overo build. John Rigby pulls from Linux dash Lenaro. He then adds some Debian packaging stuff on top of that. So his tree actually gets rebased, which is, um, it's common for doing this type of car. It's normally not common to rebase public trees, but for um, these packaging ones, this is also how, uh, 
how Ubuntu does it as well. So he takes the kernel, he then adds on his packaging scripts, and then he also pulls in what they call, uh, I think, Ubuntu sauce. There's a few patches that get placed on top of that. So when you're actually on your, you know, your nano build or whatever, and you're wondering where the kernel source is from that is coming from, it's coming from that tree. And then there's also the U-boot, uh, sorry, U-boot Lenaro stable uh, Git tree, and that's the U-boot source that's going into those builds. And uh, John actually maintains that tree as well. And we also have a, a link on the website. Oh, here's a, I forgot to show this earlier. This is the RT Lenaro, so you can just, uh, when you come up to this, there's the login with single sign-on to get into that. Um, we have a, in our Git section of the uh, how-tos, we actually have a list of some uh, Git repositories. I won't go into uh, all the trees now, but if you're kind of wondering like where things are coming from, that's a, a good place to uh, find that at. And Bazaar. So if you're new to Lenaro, you're probably going to be new to Bazaar. Um, we use this uh, for pretty much all of the Lenaro created projects. So the things that are upstream like Uboot and the kernel, those are all, we're using what the upstreams do. So, you know, it's mainly Git. But for the internal stuff like uh, Lenaro image tools and things like that, we're actually using Bazaar. And, um, Given that a lot of people are new to that, we actually have a pretty good set of uh, how-tos under Category Bazaar in the wiki. And these were, uh, we tried to write these kind of as a use case model, so I need to do X with Bazaar. <laughs> and there's several of these uh, wiki pages that will walk you through step-by-step -step setting that up. Um, one thing I want to uh, give you a tip on, because it's easy to skip over this in the wiki, but uh, like in the steps when you're going through it. When you first uh, bring up Bazaar, go ahead and configure with the Bazaar Who Am I. That basically sets up like the name that the commits are going as. It's not like a, a deal breaker, but I found I, I'm a Git guy, and if you screw up like who the commit author is in Git, it's really easy to amend that commit, fix that problem. Bazaar is not so easy, so. Just do it up front and it'll save you a little bit of heartache and when you're going forward. Um, another really cool tool is this uh, Bazaar-GTK. This is uh, very similar to uh, GitK. It's not quite as powerful, but when, you, when I found when you're new to uh, version control, you have a hard time visualizing like what your changes are doing, how that's fitting into everything. And here I'm in the... Um, Lenaro image tools. After you install uh, Bazaar-GTK, you actually launch it with BZR uh, BIZ. So as you'll see, it's going to uh, come up, and this is kind of similar to GitK if you used it. One important setting that is not done by default that I highly recommend you uh, set up is go and select Show Diffs. This way as you're uh, scrolling through the tree, you can actually see here on the side like the actual changes that are going into these commits. And Lenaro tools. Um, if, if you're a developer at Lenaro, probably the first two things you're going to find yourself needing are installing our tool chain and installing Lenaro image tools. Um, the tool chain, we actually have a, a wiki page for how to use that, but uh, if you're on like Natty and newer, these things are now just in the Ubuntu archive, so you can just do an app get install of these. Um, what may happen with Lenaro image tools, depending on what you're doing, if you're creating like a new hard, hardware pack or something, you may need to actually work off of what's in Bazaar. And to get to that, it's uh, real simple to, uh, you just run Bazaar branch LP colon 
Lenaro dash image tools. And that'll actually pull down the, the code. So you're working off what's at the tip and not what is currently packaged. Oh, I left out the O there. So I'm going to just skip over that because it take a bit. Um, another little tip, this is just your own preference, but something I've started doing on my uh, laptop or like dev boxes is instead, I, I like to play around and stuff on like the latest builds and stuff that are coming from uh, Ubuntu and you need a stable development environment. So there's a cool thing in, uh, that comes in uh, just the default uh, release of any of these, uh, of any Ubuntu uh, distro, which is called a S root and it's uh, it basically sets up a root environment and also um, does like some of the magic of setting up your proc mount points and stuff within this. So what I've started doing is actually using the S root and then I install all the dev tools I'm using for Lenaro just into that, and then you just have like one directory that you can like tarball up and back up to something, and then if you want to get reckless and install like the latest Oneric build or something, you're not going to be out of business with like the actual dev work you need to do. And the bootloader, so the, the big tip I want to give you with this, we, we, we have a bootloader deploy wiki page if you need to uh, understand like how that's built and packaged. But uh, one, one big tip I want to mention here is with the uh, boot.screen file that we use. This is, um, it, it's a common thing in uBoot, but it seems like a lot of people that are new to Lenaro have, uh, they pick up their uBoot parameters and instructions just from like Flash. And we actually put this boot.screen that's in the uh, SD card in the first partition with the bootloader. And what happens is that script will run and uh, a lot of the ways they're set up, I, I used to hit this when I was doing some stuff with the Overo board. I would like set some parameters, like when uBoot comes up, I'll do like set ENV, like MPU rate 720, and I would boot it, and it wouldn't be picking that up. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Well, boot.screen was running stuff, and it was over, like, overloading what I was setting. So, if you're having some weird things with the bootloader and you're setting variables and it's not like showing up, take a look at boot.screen and make sure it's not like trying to overwrite what you're doing. And if it is, we actually have a little bit of a hack to, to deal with boot.screen. Now this isn't, um, this isn't needed as much as it used to be. So now we include just a plain text version of the boot.screen file. So if, once you're once you boot it into your system, you can actually edit that and then run this uh, MK image uh, script to uh, generate a new boot dot screen with the parameters you want. But if you run into some weird scenario where all you have is a boot dot screen and you you want to um, edit that, there's just a small header. The first 72 bytes are just junk. So <laughs> almost. I, what's that? Almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it, it matters to you, boot, <laughs> <Yes>. but <laughs> to you it doesn't. So um, I, I just created this hack, and a, a lot of people have kind of used it, where you, it just takes a boot dot screen and creates the plain text version, and then you can edit that and run your make MK image to uh, get around those issues. couple of uh, kernel tips. Um, first uh, link again, we have a kernel deploy page which will walk you through step by step if you need to uh, to build a kernel, like how you can go about, like where, you, where you'll get your git tree from, how to build it, how to deploy it to your actual SD card. Um, we have a couple of uh, tips that I recommend. Um, one thing is installing Ccache. 
I don't know if you guys have used this before or heard about it, but it, you, uh, it, let me show you a, a make file of how you can update your build. So this is the master make file for a Linux kernel here. And all I've done is change the host CC and host uh, the C++ and then the actual uh, cross compiler here to use Ccache. And what it does is it keeps a stash of all the object files in a like hidden directory in your home uh, folder. So each time you do a new build, even if like you're doing a clean build, it does some checking. It's smart enough to know, okay, this is actually the same file. I just can use this so it doesn't have to rebuild stuff. So if you're rebuilding your kernel a bunch during the day, it speeds up your time dramatically. Um, another thing that winds up happening is if you're working on the Lenaro kernel tree and you want to use the Lenaro config file so that you're building the same thing that you're, you know, you're trying to debug a problem and you want to get that same config file. There's two ways you can do this. Uh, one is uh, a little bit easier if, if you have the board up. It's actually under um, <coughs> then, uh, config dash blah blah blah. But an uh, easy way to generate that is this little script that we show here. This is a, I, I kind of stole the logic that John Rigby's Debian uh, build scripts do, and it's kind of a series of concatenating config files to create one master one. So you can just download this. I actually just uh, saved this in my, um, in my home folder on my dev box and call it like, I changed it up to create like the Overo config. I just dump that out every time instead of like trying to find my SD card and copy the config over. It makes life just a little bit easier. Um, and the last topic I wanted to uh, talk about is hardware packs. So it, hardware packs are kind of a Lenaro specific thing, but um, what these are, if you don't have a background with it, is this is how we bundle the bootloader, the xloader, the kernel. It's a combination of all these things that wind up going on the first partition of your SD card to uh, boot them. And if you're working like on a landing team and you may have to create a new one for uh, a board that you're uh, working on, we have created two different uh, links here, the uh, hardware packs. That gives more of an overview of what they are and what comprises of them. And the second link, adding new hardware support, is kind of, will walk you through doing this. It's actually a pretty handy link. Um, Angus, who is, uh, I forgot what, uh, team Samsung. Number, yeah, Samsung. He was, uh, he and I kind of worked through this to uh, when he did his first hardware pack. So. It should be pretty good because he went, you know, it, he was writing the notes as he went through the pain. So um, that's really where you want to get started. Um, there's also links on these pages of uh, who to talk to when you're going through this. Uh, talk to me. That's where I would start, and I can point you where you need to go if uh, if I can't help you. And that is. Uh, all for the presentation. I, I don't know if you guys have questions or talk about whatever. I have a question. Back a couple of slides where you're talking about the configuration. I see what the actual configuration is. Is that for the root file system only or also? It shows up on the root file system, yeah. Okay. Where can you find, I mean, because I guess the first thing I did was you know, follow the instructions and use one of the release kernels. But then when I went to go build a kernel and use the default configuration for my platform, it's definitely different than what got released. Yes. So I didn't know where to find that configuration for the release. Yeah, so like when you boot it, so when you booted up your actual device, it's under each slash boot and then uh, config line inspection. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you just take the SD card out, it's on the second partition. Okay. So it'd be a mount point there. So you can copy it that way. Or I found that to be kind of a pain. Actually, I don't think we even used to have that, so I created the script before you could even do that, but I find it just easier to run that little script on the website and uh, 
it creates the equivalent of uh, what John's uh, build creates. So. Any other questions? Uh, I got yeah. one to go for. Um, the mail, there's various mail lists, like for the different working groups. Um, this might be a little bit of a process. Is there a place to go for all the archived mail lists? Yes. Um, I think it's under. Is it about the head of the young that has it? Yeah, actually, that's probably the, the better way to to do it. Um, in the getting involved, we also have the uh, the links here for the different mailing lists. So you can go to that, and then actually from these links, that's what he said. That'll lead you to the uh, archives of them. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you got one more question. These are uh, those are two good ones. So, all right. Well, uh, thanks for uh, taking time to uh, sit through this with me. And if you ever have any problems, you know, reach out to me. That's what uh, Michael and I are here to to help. So, if something and if you just find something annoying, you're like, man, this sucking time out of my life each week. Let us know, and we'll try to uh, you know help however we can. Is this uh, presentation you just gave, is that somewhere where we grab it? Yeah, actually I'll send an email out to everyone. I, I, it's a Google Doc. Okay. So uh, I will, uh, I need to update it, but I will uh, send it. I copied everything to Open Office this morning when Wi-Fi went crazy, so there's some updates in this that aren't in the one on the web. But yeah, I'll send out a link to that so you can get to it. All right. Ooh.